Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for us to go through the uh, major news uh, papers and the news stories making headlines across the country this morning. I'm starting with the uh, this day newspapers. But before that, uh, good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, also, before we start, uh, my parents will never separate. Uh, just to quickly fix oh my God. that, uh, <laughs> fix that uh, <laughs> statement that I made earlier. No, I will not be happy. Anyway, uh, let's start with the this day newspapers uh, this morning and see what major stories that we can find over there. The big one uh, you can see on your screen is talking about small arms. It says federal government moves to curb small arms influx, establishes control center. Uh, Bauchi raises alarm over Boko Haram threats to four local government areas. And also National Security Council reconvenes today. Bandits threaten to kill abducted Greenfield University students today. And uh, suspected headsmen kill 17 in Benway State. We can also find here PDP demands state police, power devolution, border, control, border protection council. And also, stock market rallies to 418 billion naira gain in April. You can find that on page six. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, after 27 years, and we shared this earlier, after 27 years, Bill Gates and wife Melinda uh, separate. That's well, not I'm a light note. <laughs> and in their marriage. And NPC sells 267 billion naira crude oil, uh, maintains 1.42 million barrels per day output. Those are the big ones on the This Day newspapers this morning. On the Nation newspaper, the headline reads, Abductors threaten to kill 17 students after 55 million Naira ransom. Kidnappers give today, Tuesday, May 4th, as deadline for 100 million Naira payments. Parents beg. And inside the papers, it says, Abductors of Kogi Council Chief demand 100 and M... Um, that's not clear. Okay. Moving on, abductors kill boy after one million naira ransom. Emo businessman killed at checkpoint. Herdsmen kill 11 in Benue attack. Above the headline on the Pont the Nation newspaper, why 4.2 million euros Ibori linked loot returns is delayed. Government sets up center to tackle small arms. Still above the Nation newspaper, Mackinde under fire. Over 1.2 billion naira or your lodge. Businessman arrested over emo attacks. Uzodim Mat leaders speak up. Mbaka says, I took three expatriate contractors to Buhari. Bill Gates and 27 years marriage with Melinda. Lagos APC Council poll sale of form closes Tuesday. Uh, this one says Bill Gates ends the marriage with Melinda, but. Uh, the story I saw said Melinda filed for divorce, but anyway. Right, well. NIN registration deadline now June 30 with 54 million uh, enrolled. Below the headline, NDLA recovers drugged cakes, cocaine in Itries. This is the second of such news in recent time. Boko Haram infiltrates Bauchi Council's Banu communities. Those are the stories on the Nation newspaper. This, uh, or rather the Nigerian Tribune, coming up next, uh, we can find here. 19 killed, houses burnt as suspected headsmen attack Benue community. Bandits threaten to kill remaining 17 Greenfield University students today. If 100 million naira is not paid, says 55 million naira already spent to feed them. 55 million naira. Hmm. All right. Um, still on the Nigerian Tribune, Bill and Melinda Gates divorce after 27-year marriage. Afeni Ferrer to Buhari organized constitutional conference without delay. And also documentation delaying return of 4.2 million pounds Ibori loot to Nigeria, says the federal government. After 25 years, INEC to create 57,023 new polling units battles external forces. And uh, World Press Freedom Day, editors call for release of detained journalists, decry attempts to muzzle media. NDLEA arrest varsity students for selling cannabis in textbooks in uh, Niger. Raids eateries in Plateau Inugu recovers drugged cakes and cocaine. Ooh, all right. This morning still, Anambra youths tie man to tree and flog him for beating his mother. PDP offers to help Buhari, proffers way out of national crisis. 
wants armed forces adequately ad equipped, welfare, uh, top priority, says uh, Gumi. Or if Gumi can find bandits, security agents can. We can also find on the Nigerian Tribune, no plan to topple Buhari's government, says the defense headquarters, restates absolute loyalty to administration, warns military personnel against illegalities. These are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. On the Nation News, the Guardian newspaper states governments face historic liquidity crisis. Plan to spend 86% of yearly total revenues on recurrent bills. Withdrawal of CBN's budget support threatens survival. Some states can't pay debts in 50 years, says Uba. Still on the Guardian newspaper, major reversal growth trajectory hits telecoms industry. Sector loses 12.1 million subscribers in five months. Broadband penetration drops by 3.84% as 6 million Nigerians lose internet access. Future GDP growth contributions look bleak. Stakeholders foresee faster recovery. Seal on the Guardian, Boko Haram entering Bauchi from Yobi. Governor cries out. Herders kill 17 persons, injure others in Benue State. Abductors threaten to kill remaining Greenfield Varsity students, demand 100 million naira for Kogi Council Chair. You're managing Nigeria's diversity, PDP, I beg your pardon, you're mismanaging Nigeria's diversity, PDP tells Buhari. Probe agitations in policy, Anim urges president. And lastly, INEX set to create 57,023 new polling units against alleged external pressures. Those are the stories of The Guardian. And finally, on the Punch newspapers this morning, outrage as Benue Herders murder 19 bandits vow to kill 17 varsity students. ACF, Otom, Middle Belt Forum, others express anger, say federal government lacks capacity to stop widespread killings. Uh, bandits threatened to kill 17 abducted Kaduna undergraduates today after collecting 55 million naira ransom, demand 100 million naira. We can also find on the punch this morning, army to summon Ondo lawyer alleging campaign of 3,000 Fulani. Wife tackles uh, Ekiti, uh, uh, or rather, I'm not sure why wife tackles Ekiti here. Uh, okay. Over rape allegation against ex-lawmaker. Soldiers kill businessman in his car, you know, where a checkpoint frame victim. And also, by attacking me, the current government is courting God's wrath. And that's from Fadambaka. Gunmen abduct three Ibarakpa ranch owners, demand 10 million naira. And on Press Freedom Day, NHRC condemns NBC's fines, National Assembly's anti-media bill. Still on the punch, external reserves lost $350 million in two weeks, says the CBN. Minimum wage. Labor lashes defaulting governors, backs Ngigay's litigation threat. And federal government prepares 400 suspected Boko Haram sponsors, uh, BDC operators, charges. All right, um, let's bring in our guest this morning, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Um, and uh, you could go ahead. So many of these stories I believe you want to speak on. Yeah, um, of course, we have to do the um, threats by the bandit kill uh, the remaining great university students. And uh, to me, it's, it's the lowest um, force uh, in terms of insecurity across the country. And don't forget that bandits have killed five of those students already and are threatening to kill those. Uh, this is the time for us to wake up and do the need, uh, especially government uh, at the federal and the state level. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the governor of um, Kabuna State already that he's not going to negotiate with uh, bandit, kidnappers, or whatever. But the life of these children at stake. So we just have to need to uh, accept the announcement that we as Nigeria should start contributing money. Uh, to get students out. And if it comes to uh, maybe we're contributing about 1,000 naira at the rest of them, anything we do to make sure that this cannot kill uh, should be done. Um, at, at the end of it, we don't end up um, shedding cocoa dye tears. Uh, it will be uh, funny for me 
when the body said that they spent over 40 million naira uh, feeding the, the, the students. And then my question there is, uh, were they eating elephant? Um, those are just propaganda uh, statements. But the most important part of it for me is that these children must be released. Whatever it's going to cost to do that, they have to die. Let us first of all drive you with hope. Then not talk with that hand and look at that issues a little bit. Um, the stance being put by the governor of Kaduna, um, Manasil Erai, is not helping matter at all, and that's not the school. Um, to press a road to get that is a very important. But I'm um, going to start from 8 million. Now we are here to say 100 million. Whatever is going to say. But it is a important job to be able to make sure that some of that can be a or boundary kidnapping and they are brought to and given um, some kind of punishment that will act as a parent. But now I have not seen it. I've not seen any level of execution, and that in this uh, aids this uh, of banditry, and which is not going to do any good. We must find the mechanism of making sure those behind this um, rascal, rascality, and whatever you call it, are brought to. Except we start doing and making example of who they engage in this kind of crime. All right, Mr. Wando, <laughs> Mr. Wando, still on, still on this, um, on this uh, topic. Uh, you may mention, you know, you started by talking about uh, how, you know, maybe we should crowdfund and uh, pay this ransom and get these uh, kids out, you know. But the, the Kaduna State Government has said that they will not be paying ransom. Um, but don't you think that should come side by side with a tactical idea or tactical or security uh, um, plan on how to rescue these kids, you know, if we are choosing to not pay ransom? Because we can't keep paying ransom. If you're, if you're using 55 million naira to feed people that didn't ask to be fed in the first place, then of course these you know kidnappers are going to keep looking for more people to kidnap. So you know, do you think that it's it's important that we have our security agencies capable of rescuing these kids, regardless of what it takes? My brother, our security agents paid us. So what we do? If it's your daughter or your son that is being kidnapped and is in dangers of kidnappers, and the security agents are looking, what will you do? Will you resort to self? You make sure to make a bridge, you do everything humanly possible to make sure that your child is rescued. And that is the point which we are not. It's so good that our security agents cannot even do anything. How many days, how many weeks have been there? Are they telling us they know where they, this is? How come they have not gone on a, a, a red mission? It is very easy uh, for Gumi to move around, he knows all camps, where most of them, all these um, bandits are. What has he, what he has an interest in, done to be able to um, help out. Don't forget that the other students that kidnapped and our were picked the uh, School of Forest, uh, we still forgotten those two. They are in captivity, but so the 30 years that the character agents have lost to initiate, uh, they don't know what to do, or they don't have a, a, a capacity to do it. Or the political will is there. So what is it for me is for us to make sure that we get whatever it to take us to make sure that we get this student out. We should do that. The security agencies, uh, the World is telling them about well. I was watching a, a documentary by one of the uh, national televisions a few days ago where somebody whose friend was given, was given a narrative that even as individuals that they would hire private security agencies, they were tracked, they were able to track every move of those that kidnap guys. At the agencies and the security agencies they have such. What happens to you, drone, and all the necessary um, um, tech equipment to track this and make sure to get them eliminated and stop all this? But it's obvious that security agencies uh, seems to have the initiative. My own take is, is that whatever it takes to make sure that we rescue this trend, we have to rescue them. They've gone in, they've gone to a no Trauma. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just talking to parents. And yeah, I, I'm just wondering if my daughter mom is kidnapped and in danger for over four weeks, good months, and nothing's been done. Some of those that we are kidnapped that were from Chidbop, years now we've known that. Are you are you aware that we count them till now? It's very it's, it's, it's the charity news now.
Mm. All right, relating to this issue of security we're talking about, on you know the this day newspaper, the headline reads, FG moves to curb small arms influx, establishes control center. And we see here that, you know, the president, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, basically approved the establishment of this, of this, you know, small arms control center, saying it will address the emerging security threat, you know, prevent and control small arms, you know, in Nigeria. But time and time again, we've seen things like this. We know that in August 2020, the president approved the establishment of the center. You know, but how much has been done to curb the proliferation of arms? We keep seeing these terrorists with more sophisticated weapons than the Nigerian soldiers. So just how much faith do you have in this new uh, center aimed to control the proliferation of arms and light weapons? When it comes to, I'm a pessimist and I don't have any faith and I don't think it's going to work. We, we seem to be putting the wrong uh, issues. The problem we have as country is our brothers, but how many places can man? We have thousands and thousands of illegal borders in this country. Where are all these arms being true? And until we put to uh, um, handle that, then we continue, we continue with this. How many, we say control center, um, we hear what is happening, we heard what happened across the country. Uh, if you have a control center, without control center, stop these guys from bringing arms. We even had that this is weird, forget that. Uh, they, at a point, the federal government also stopped, uh, uh, put a new fly on in some part of Zampara, where it alleged that some people come in uh, with a flight to drop arms, pick um, uh, gold and rest of them. So, so the issue for me now is hard to And that is where the use of technology is very key. The problem we have in this country is we are not invest so much in, uh, in IT, information technology, on technology. Most countries are, but it's no longer the, it, it, um, it, um, issues of security is no longer the number of suits we have, the number of uh, policemen you have, and the rest of them. It is now more technical. As countries are deploying um, technology, to be, if you have drones scattered around all these uh, all these areas, you can at any uh, given point that you can be be point what is coming. I have been covered. So it's not, you ask several times the people that have uh, illegal arms to come and surrender. The many people do surrender, surrender in their arms. And that is where the problem is. So what we need to do personally, I feel, is be able to find a way of saving our borders, cross borders. They are so porous. There are many places that look up in the north, in the southwest, in the south, south, everywhere. Even the south, I'm talking about the south. People coming to water, how many, how many important can we be able to have we been able to uh, get a get, um, influx of um, people and ask? So that, for me, is the problem we have. So um, the, there was a time that the development established uh, a, a commission, a committee on, on small arm. And I don't know what happened and what, I don't know what they need to do. Um, but let's give government the benefit of that. Maybe this would be a different uh, um, scenario. For me, mm. I doubt it if, if it's Okay. All right. Um, there's also uh, something from the uh, defense headquarters uh, saying no plan to topple Buhari's government. It's on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. It says uh, no plan to topple Buhari government. Also restates absolute loyalty to the current administration and uh, warns military personnel against illegality. Let's have your take on that too. Yes, I think that statement is mean. Uh, Based on the statement made by uh, the statesman, uh, uh, Chief J.P. Clark, as a, who was in a shop, the army, uh, intervention, the rest of them, uh, so still believe that the worst um, uh, civilian uh, government is far, far better than the best military government. Um, that putting on my own take on that, but in context, we so realize our politicians have been doing what they're supposed to do. I've not been able to live up to a decision. We are having so many challenges economically, socially, politically, and most importantly, security. But that, that in itself not necessarily call for the military incursion into government. It's a, a mirage um, across the globe, a military interventions no longer. You see what is in me. Uh, 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 
is, uh, is some I am quite already. Look at what is happening in Chad and uh, um, and other and some one or two countries that um, had military intervention. For me, what we are, I think we lack in our political will and the leadership to go to do this right. Mm -hmm. Even within the, um, uh, the, the political party, uh, the government of uh, President Mugabe, I still believe that people in this that can destroy, who can get an us out of this. But the problem is that they're giving the opportunity. Uh, what we have been saying, man, uh, uh, seems to be uh, really acting issues and people use the data for them, use every opinion, shade of opinion, put across uh, about the problem that we have. That is the way to, uh, as we believe that what we need now is a bipartisan uh, kind of uh, relationship. We are across the lines. Leaders, our leaders have come together. Who has to and see we can get our start of good. But the system is getting out to hand and out of control on this basis. But calling the relationship for me is a no. Still right. on security matters, on the Punch newspaper, a story here reads, FG prepares 400 suspected Boko Haram sponsors and BDC operators charges. So they're basically saying that about 400 people who are alleged to be sponsors of Boko Haram and, you know, their financiers, that, you know, there was a nationwide operation and they would be arraigned. You know, so the, 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 the report here says... These people indicted are businessmen. They are bureau de change operators. They were arrested in Kano, in Bono, Abuja, Lagos, Sokoto, Adamawa, Kaduna, and Zamfara State. So, you know, this is coming after six Nigerians were jailed in the UAE on allegations of terrorism financing. So would you say this, this is progress for our security fight? Yeah, good one. But don't get that. There have all been instances where arrest several Boko Haram terrorists in the past. Uh, uh, recently, last few months, got some arrest and um, tried them immediately, although some were too bad. They tie in uh, prison, cost of the opportunity of them and for them. Uh, the problem we have is that taking all sorts of um, insinuations and making sorts of assertions, the rest of them, we come to talk to King Marshall. Mr. Chris, I want to. Name them. I want to know, I want to know behind this. We want to see them prosecuted. And that is the issue. It's not just rhetoric. The ones in Dubai, they arrested. You can see how fast and how quick um, the government of Dubai came out with those names and all. Um, um, started execution, but ours will continue on a basis where so oh, there are people doing this. And I know the investigation most often than another part of the world. Before you start prosecution, before the, any government or agency make it such, they must have done the due diligence. They must have finished investigate. The next thing you just being brought to court and prosecution. But how do I, as you know, the way we are here. We start prosecution, we start looking for uh, evidence, we start looking for witnesses and the rest of it. And the end of it, and that, that the reason, um, agents they hardly get uh, any of conviction. So, uh, if the names, let us see them, and let us move quickly and start prosecuting them, and making sure to make example of them. Um, All, right. All right, Mr. Chris, I want to... All right. Okay, that's the so much we can take. Lots of you know, interesting stories on the papers. I wish we could have you know, had time to talk about, but that's the so much we can take. Thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. We do have a seat. You, oh, you too. And uh, we, of course, quickly apologize for the poor network quality or sound quality from uh, um, his end this morning. Uh, thanks for starting the show with us. Still, we'll take a short break when we come back. Uh, we're talking about what happened today in history. A lot of uh, pretty interesting stories we'll be sharing with you. Stay with us here on The Breakfast.